Because HF Holidays have a hotel at North Balahulish, I have witnessed the dramatic landscapes bordering Loch Leven more times than I can remember. There are two Loch Levens in Scotland. This is the Sea Loch in the shadow of Ben Nevis, not far from Glencoe, which no doubt I will feature another time. A railway used to run as far as Balahulish on the southern shore of the loch, but as it never made a profit, Beeching saw to its closure. Today, the best way to arrive by public transport is by bus, operated by CityLink from Glasgow, on a service heading for Fort William. There used to be a ferry across the loch, the alternative being a long detour around the loch via Kinloch Leven. Today, a bridge reduces the journey time. Ben Nevis was a super volcano. But don't worry, that was 500 million years ago, and there has been little activity recently. Much of the landscapes around Loch Leven and Glencoe were created or sculptured by more recent action, the Ice Age, over the last two million years. And anyway, 500 million years ago, Scotland wasn't where it is today, and not even joined to England. At one time, it was 20 degrees south of the equator. Therefore, what we enjoy photographing today has been fashioned by an age that is difficult to comprehend, and when staying at North Balahulish, the first thing to catch the eye and excite the senses is the conical peak of the Pap of Glencoe. This distinctive mountain profile works well as a silhouette, and I have on several occasions been fortunate to seize the magic moment. Big views like this are captured by stalking the prey, some photographers resorting to camping out overnight. But I go for the luxury of a hotel room with en-suite facilities and a cooked breakfast before I start. It doesn't matter whether you camp overnight or stay in a posh hotel. Either way, you are at the mercy of the weather. Even the status of your camera won't help. Because of the profusion of 3,000-foot mountains, this Loch Leven landscape is prone to Atlantic storms. The weather can be kinder around Balahulish, where the loch is at its greatest girth and closer to the sea. Further up the valley towards Kinloch Leven, it narrows, the mountains encroaching on the scene, increasing the prospect of inclement weather, and up neighbouring Glencoe. The distinctive profile of the pub is a focal point for many views from the loch, and one of my favourites is a mile or so from Kinloch Leven on the north side of the loch where the road executes a double bend. There is, incidentally, limited off-road parking here. Whilst it can blow a gale up the loch on this occasion, I was fortunate to capture the view when there wasn't a breath of wind. Truly a photograph created by weather. Although well known locally, a hidden gem just below the pap is Glencoe Lochan. It is artificial, constructed by Lord Strathcona to make his American bride feel at home. He owned Glencoe until 1935, some of which he sold to the National Trust for Scotland. The Lochan is surrounded by conifer and maple trees, affording tantalising glimpses of the surrounding mountains. It is certainly loved and appreciated by visitors, but unfortunately for his bride it didn't work. However, for photographers it is the perfect escape for a wet day, which in this part of Scotland is not rare. For the big view across an open landscape, you need the weather on your side. Whilst I might wish for a bit of sun, that is not necessarily the case. This image amply demonstrates that, taken one evening from Balahulish. But 
When I came back the following morning, things could not have been more different. What a difference a night makes! Balahulish, which means the village of the Narrows or Settlement on the Strait, was a centre for slate mining, the railway serving its quarries. On the lockshore are some of the former buildings, suitable subjects for the creative photographer. Nearby is a large hotel, but the headland from where these views are taken is open to the public. This admittedly wonderful view is the only one known to visitors crossing the Balahulish Bridge, which is a pity. Opened in 1975, it replaced a ferry or a long detour around Kinloch Leven. If you have time, instead of taking this shortcut, try the scenic detour. I guarantee you won't be disappointed, but photographically it will take longer than planned.